Hey, it looks like a couple of you are on. Hopefully this is working. Uh, at the top left, there's a blue box that says chat. Let's go ahead. You can click that, and it should show up over on the right-hand side. Oops, great. Sorry about that. My uh, webcam's a little precarious. Okay, if anybody's here, it says there's only one person, so you must be having some problems. Top left, it says chat, so let me know if you're here uh, by clicking the top left blue chat, and then on the right-hand side, group chat thing should show up, and you should be able to say something. Okay, it uh, looks like a few more people are uh, trickling in. Hopefully this works. Uh, Okay, uh, if anyone is watching, I think we'll wait and see if we can get some more uh, people on, obviously, before we get started. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on. So, yeah, instead of... Uh, Get my face when I'm eating everything. That's, that's better.
Okay, oh, it looks like we're getting there. Six people now. Um, I still haven't had anyone... I want to make sure this chat works. Can you guys see the group chat? I don't... I hope you're able to look at it. It's at the top left. It should have a blue box that says chat. When you click it, a group chat should show up on the right-hand side. Uh, if that doesn't show up, would somebody comment back on the uh, like the event page and let me know? And if it is working, then say something in the chat. Okay, so you guys can hear me, but you can't see a network error. Huh? Weird. Okay, I may... Let me see if it helps to invite you. It's going to be a pain to invite everyone. Maybe I'll try, I'll try one person. Let's see. Okay, Matthew, I'm going to invite you. Uh, maybe once you're invited, it'll work. I'll try inviting those that just respond. Okay. Oh, in the question section. Okay. Okay. So the question section is working. That's good. Let me... Okay, cool. Okay, so the questions is working, and the chat is not working? Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, let's try just doing it in the questions. That's kind of lame. But uh, let's try that. Okay, so we got Matthew on good. Is the chat working for you now? Yeah, it looks like it probably is. Uh, chat isn't working for me yet. It still isn't, huh? Oh, no. Chat's working now. Okay. So it looks like you probably have to be invited to use the chat, and you don't have to be invited to use the Q&A. Uh, yeah. So let's just do the Q&A, I guess. I couldn't... Maybe next time I'll figure out a way uh, to invite everybody... Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. I, but for now, let's just get to uh, get to it. Okay. Um, I got is Tessa here? She just sent me an email. I'll try and check on both. In fact, yeah, maybe we can do... No, it's kind of lame, but... I... Is there a way to sort these? Um, maybe we can do I, kind of a roll call just to see who's here. Let's see if we can get Tessa going. There we go. Okay. Okay, good. 
Uh, so Molly's here. Here, let me get my let me get my list out. Uh, Laura, Emma, Lexi. Yeah, I guess just everybody just just post a little uh, message on the Q and A that says that you're here. So again, that's on the the left hand side. There's a Q and A thing uh, that is a um, little blue thing, and I. Uh, just click on that, and then you should be able to write, you know, I'm here or, or whatever. And we will. I This will actually be recorded, and it will be on uh, YouTube. And so uh, eventually um, you can just watch it now if, if, this isn't, if it doesn't work out. Okay, cool. Well, let's uh, let's just get started. See how things go. I uh, will hope for the best, and uh, and see what happens. So let's see, Matthew. I'm gonna mute you for a little bit if that's all right. Uh, you won't be able to answer because you're muted now. So uh, we'll get started. So we're gonna talk about the future of the internet. So uh, hopefully this uh, works out. All right. I, I know it is really cold out there, so I hope a lot of you are able to uh, stay home and not have to not have to go out at, at least for a little while. Uh, you know, we can can kind of see how this works. See if it's something that uh, you think is uh, yeah might work in the future for our class, or or at least it gives us a chance to look at technology that that I think is interesting for uh, for educational purposes as well as for lots of other things. Um, you know, the idea. That uh, that you can um, can communicate with a small group across distances. You know, it's for rural students who find who have a hard time getting to class or whatever. You know, those sorts of things. This can definitely be uh, uh, you know kind of a real a real way to engage with with others. Not to mention these sorts of things can be made. Like for example, this will be uploaded on YouTube automatically. Uh, those sorts of things are pretty cool. So uh, for announcements first. Uh, the first tech tool on the blog, overall, people did really pretty well. I, I don't think too many people uh, have uh, much room to uh, to complain. I think uh, I think overall, I, I was pleased with how things went. Uh, for those tech tools, as long as you're really doing an effort, uh, you'll almost always receive pretty close to, to full credit. I think most of you received full credit. Um, if it's obvious you didn't really think about it or weren't really trying to Answer the question, or you know, didn't actually look at anything. I'm just copying and pasting something or whatever. Uh, then that's kind of where you'll get get dinged. But the big point is for you to get comfortable with the technology. And so, uh, I think, yeah, I think everyone did well. Uh, the blog as well. I I wanted to give some some feedback, some general feedback. I also gave specific feedback. I emailed each of your Purdue email addresses, at least the the ones that I had or could find. Uh, and so if you um, did not um, receive that, then please let me know, uh, and and I'll fix the email address. I'll put a new one in for you. Uh, so that's first. So everyone should have received specific feedback, and then I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about uh, kind of some general feedback. So uh, a lot of you, are, well, most most people were able to do things get everything uh, everything right, but there were a few things that were kind of common. So I wanted to show how in WordPress to include a picture and how to include an, an in-text link. Uh, and then uh, we'll, we'll go from there. So I'll, I'm going to start with that. In fact, I'll need to uh, switch my screen share Oops. so I can show that. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Close this. Oh, darn it. What's going on here?
Okay, my screen sharing just totally quit working. Let me see if I can figure it out. You may, well, I really want that to work. Okay, this is going to be a pain, but I think I'm going to have to reload, so I don't know what that's going to do. It's going to kick everyone out, and you'll have to get back in. If so, I apologize. Um, so here goes nothing. I'm going to reload. If it kicks you out, come back in. If not, I'll be right back. Okay, good. It looks like I still have everyone. Uh, so let's go to this and WordPress. Okay, so I in WordPress, I have a blog like this. Make sure that... And let me know in the, uh, the Q&A if, uh, if it's not working, if something I think is working isn't. But So you'll have a blog like this. I, Purdue rules, and then you want to add a picture, you just add media, and then you can, uh, you know, look up Purdue or whatever in Google Image Search. is a great way to do it. Uh, and copy the image URL and paste it there, and it'll show up. Uh, and then it's important to uh, provide attribution for your images. I mean, you, to be honest, we really should be making sure that the images are legal to share and things like that. Um, I, but, so you, but you should at the least provide our attribution. So let me show you how to do that, because I think it is an important, uh, important skill. So there are usage rights, even in Google, oops, in Google Images. Uh, under search tools, you can do usage rights, and you can do, you know, labor, labeled for reuse. In this case, we aren't really doing it commercially, so we don't have to, to look for that. So uh, these ones you can reuse. So this is from Wikimedia Commons. So somebody uploaded this to, to the Wikipedia site. Uh, so that'd be that'd be a great one to use. So you could use that. Except that it's super blurry, but uh, you get the point. So maybe we'll use that one instead. So you do something like that, and you know, you know, image from Wikimedia Commons. Something, even something as simple as that is good. Uh, and so you can do that. And then, in fact, you could even make that a link. So the way this, and this will kill two birds with one stone. So the way you make something a link is you highlight it and figure out where you want the link to go to. And so in this case, uh, we probably go to, uh, yeah, something like this. That's where it's coming from. Oops. And so you would just click the, this link after you have it highlighted and click the des do the destination URL and then add link. So now this is a link to, uh, to where that, that picture came from. And if you look at the page, uh, you can see, oh, great, the image isn't working. Nice. But the link works. I don't know why that is. You might sometimes you may have to download if something like this happens. You might have to download the image onto your computer and then upload it again. But it, you'd still want to say where it came from uh, again because people deserve attribution for their work and and legally you're often often required to do that. I'll make sure that uh, no one's having trouble. Okay, good. So hopefully that helps with those those two things. Um, okay. Good, good. Okay, so let's go back to the, it's kind of a pain that these questions aren't really in order, but oh well. Uh, let me help delete some of those that are. Okay, uh, let's go back to the other screen share and see if it'll work. It's so stupid, once I stop screen sharing, it won't let me do it again. So I'll have to refresh again, but it looks like it didn't kick you guys out last time, so hopefully it won't this time. And I'll be right back again. Okay. And I'm back. And we'll screen share the uh, presentation again.
Okay. So, I. Uh, yeah, this is this is a pain because I really wanted to have a good conversation about this, and I I think the chat is the best way to do that. I wonder if I can. Yeah, I don't know. I'll I'll look it up. I'll look it up after. I really thought it would work for you guys just as viewers uh, to be able to use the chat, but I. Uh, but apparently it doesn't. So uh, I'll see if I can I'll see if I can figure that out for the future. Um, so I to. We'll do the lecture, and we'll see. I mean, we'll try and use the Q and A as, as much as we can. To, uh, in fact, maybe we could use the. I wonder if that'll work a little better. The actual event page back where you came in might be a little bit uh, better. It's at least it's it's kind of in order. So let's use that as the chat, if that makes sense. So so you should have two windows. One is the the one that has the video, and then the other is is the screen. So maybe we can use that to kind of interact. Uh, I'll write a message on there, interact over here. Uh, and so that's where you can kind of answer questions and, and talk about what's going on. So uh, hopefully that makes sense. Um, so the internet today is from the last lecture, if you remember, we didn't quite finish. Uh, so it's decentralized. Uh, so decentralized in the sense that, that there's nowhere to turn the internet off. Uh, Unlike, and this, these are kind of in opposition to, to traditional media, to television and radio. Uh, television stations, there are, you know, big broadcasting uh, towers. There are studios. And when you want to shut down television, uh, you just go, uh, you just go to the people that own those things. With, as you know, the police and shut those down, uh, and so. But the internet, there's nothing like that. There are routers and there are backbones, but they all. Uh, but things move around them. Things can. Uh, can get around problems. So if one router gets shut down, it's not a problem, and uh, and everyone can still get to all the content, uh, which is is really important. And so it's it's not as easy for the state to control. That doesn't mean it's impossible. There are places like North Korea where there's still a lot of a lot of control, but it's much more difficult. Uh, open. The internet was created open, uh, in the sense that it is uh, the the standards and what's going on are are completely open. No company is in control of them. No one does, no one has hid them away, but but uh, everyone knows how they work. And distributed. Again, uh, it's a distribution of of ownership. But also of the way things work, that that no one has all the power, uh, and again, this is this is really important. No one controls it, and so uh, unlike the uh, CompuServe or AOL that we talked about, where where one uh, group kind of controlled what goes on, uh, no one has the power in uh, in uh, with the internet, uh, and this is part of this is this idea that a computer doesn't need to register to be allowed on. So so you can go on to Facebook from any computer. You can buy a new computer, you start it up, and there's nothing you have to do. You don't have to say who you are. You don't have to. The computer doesn't need to uh, contact anyone and get permission to uh, to get on the internet, even to create a web page and and host it from your computer. You don't need to do anything. You just need to tell people where the computer, you know, where the web page is, and they can get to it. Uh, and this is this is the core of what the train calls this uh, generativity calls a generative uh, internet because it's because it's so open it allows for new creative things to happen that people didn't think about when it was created they they allowed for these uh, these opportunities to exist uh, and so and related to that is this idea that endpoints are, the, are what does the work the network itself doesn't know or doesn't care if what's sent is good or bad viruses are look exactly the same as a uh, you know, as programs that are that are good, it just all happens over the network. So, uh, and then Web 2.0 is kind of this idea that uh, that what we consume is is produced by us. So, uh, this is this is the the big shift that the the internet originally, as we talked about, CompuServe, AOL, they were they they thought they were the new television stations in the sense that they would produce this content. Distributed over the internet, people would consume it. Uh, the internet came along, and still at the beginning, 
it was hard to produce content. To produce a web page was expensive, and they were ugly, and you had to have a lot of coding skills. And so, uh, and so still, you know, a kind of a produce and consume model. But with Web 2.0, uh, that the that changed. That we came up with tools that allowed for people to people, normal people with plain text, to share things much easier. So Wikipedia, Reddit, Facebook, and Twitter are all uh, kind of some of the, the most popular sites, and they're all produced by normal people. Uh, and so I think I think that's a really important point, and that that the web is a place for uh, for conversation, not for content delivery uh, anymore. So. Good. So uh, I don't see anybody writing anything on the events page. Hopefully you guys found it still. Uh, write something so I know that it's working. Okay. And then I so I wanted to to sum up kind of the readings as well. Uh, this goes along with the lecture that, that I gave, but this is the reading from uh, from Thursday from last week. So as a train, I. So there are two different fights between open and closed systems. First, computers. The IBM started out where they own the computer, lease it to a company, and and then contract with the company to write software, to maintain the computer, all those things. Uh, but eventually, uh, PCs came along, and uh, they were uh, individually owned. They could run anything. They were designed to be not as powerful, but much more uh, open, much much easier to to apply it and use new software. And Microsoft's operating system, Windows, uh, became kind of the, the gold standard for this. They, instead of being bundled with hardware, they designed it to run on any hardware. And instead of be, instead of making sure that all the software on the computer was uh, Microsoft produced, they allowed people to write software for it. So th those are both important that they kind of helped to uh, uh, Nice, nice. Thanks, everyone, for just uh, letting me know you're there. Uh, so Microsoft's kind of enabled people to uh, to be um, own their computers more, I guess, and to be uh, creative with what they did. Uh, networking was the same situation that that uh, people thought it'd be like phone companies. That uh, that in the beginning there were tons of little phone companies. Uh, but it was, you know, it didn't work very well. If you wanted to talk to someone, if you were with phone company A, you wanted to talk to someone with phone company B, you couldn't do it. You know, you people would own like multiple phones, one connected to each network, which is, you know, obviously stupid. And so eventually, one of them had to win. Whichever there's this this thing called network effects, uh, where if if there's a network like that, one party almost always wins. Whenever there are benefits. To, for everyone being on the same network, everyone will be on the same network. So Facebook's a good example in the United States. Uh, it, it may not be the best social networking site. It might not have the best features, but be, people are on there because people are on there. Uh, and so uh, if your friends are there, you will be there, uh, whether or not it's the best. And so people thought the whole Internet would be like that, that there would be one. There, there are all these companies, CompuServe and AOL and the well, and people started making bets on, on which one would be the one to win. Uh, but instead, the internet won. The, the internet, which was not owned by a company, um, but which was uh, owned by by no one, which was decentralized and just distributed, and anyone could put anything up there. And so I want to uh, have a conversation on that, uh, on that page uh, about why that is. You know some ideas for why the internet isn't. You know, it's not like everyone goes to CompuServe to get to the internet, but the, why it is that the internet won instead of instead of these other things. What about the internet makes it different? So post some ideas on there. Um, in fact, maybe I will interact there for a little bit as well, just for a minute or two, and then we'll and then we'll continue uh, the conversation. Okay, now's the time. Let's see. So, 
I'll try and phrase the question. Maybe, yeah, maybe we can think about it in this way. Like, why is it possible for the internet to run without being owned by anyone? So again, for anyone that didn't hear, we're going to try to uh, try to have this conversation on the event page. So it's that original page that's in your email. Uh, I think the Q and A just is kind of the order of it just doesn't quite right. I don't think it's gonna. I don't think it's gonna work as well. Uh, so just do it in the yeah on that event page. Just throw out ideas. Not yeah, not necessarily technical ideas. Come on, don't be sissies. Kenny, yes, thank you. Yeah, good point. So Tessa says that websites have people who own or operate them still. Uh, and so there is some sense of ownership. And Frank says, is, is the internet... Isn't it government owned? It's free because it's government owned. So good, good. Uh, aren't there millions of owners? Okay, good. Yes. So this is this is really important distinction. I like this. Uh, so there is a difference between owning the endpoints, which a website is an endpoint, and owning the network itself. Uh, and so. Uh, the network is the connection between them. You know, the the idea that uh, um, yeah. So so I'll, I'll put it this way. So with the uh, uh, okay, thanks, Kenny. So you guys are answering. It's just not showing up on the stream. Good. I. Uh, Yeah. So good. Good. So with the with the phone network, and we'll put it this way, and this this might be uh, a good way to say it. The the phone network, the phone company owned the cables that connected people, and that was the network. And so because they owned the cables, you couldn't use their cables unless you paid them money. Uh, and so, uh, so maybe that's that's part of it. That that the internet. Uh, kind of works differently in the sense that it runs over cable, it runs over uh, phone cables, it runs over fiber. Uh, it's it's not just owned by the, the people who own the medium. Uh, and that, that from the beginning, uh, the infrastructure was sort of decoupled from the uh, content delivery. And so, so there were deals from the beginning. You know, AOL used AT&T's uh, phone lines from the beginning. So AOL never really owned the entire infrastructure, uh, and and that might be part of it. I think there are uh, a lot of good questions. So yeah, great, great answers, Frank. I think that's really good that the, the it's a, a system of connecting uh, computers and servers. Um, 
But again, I, I guess it's interesting. I, th I think it is important to remember that the phone companies are the same. You know, uh, the phone network is is a system of connecting phones, and yet you have to pay the phone company to get on the, the phone network. Uh, and so it's 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 a subtle difference. Uh, you know, you have to register for a number to get a, to get on the phone. People have to know who owns each phone number, uh, and that's that's different. Uh, but the internet kind of started out open and started out different. So so good, good conversation. Thanks everybody for participating. I won't get as mad now that I know there's a, a little bit of a delay. Uh, can, feel free to continue discussing that while I while I go on, and, and we'll see. Uh, we'll have a few more discussion questions as well. So the future of the internet. We've talked we've talked about the past and kind of how we got to where we are. That we have this open, decentralized, uh, owned but unowned thing. Yes. People own the endpoints. People own the sites. People, uh, you have to pay an ISP to get on the internet. But uh, for the most part, the interactions happen uh, in an, in an open way. And so, uh, so I want to talk about uh, the future of the internet. And there are a few different directions that the internet may or may not go. So it started off as a as a kind of a side project. It started off as a way for researchers and. Uh, and government agencies to, to combine to connect computers. Uh, and, and it started off as, as kind of a wild, wild west in the sense that, you know, every computer had to take care of itself, that the network itself just sent out whatever. There are no, no blocks on what could be sent, and each computer was in charge of, you know, have, making sure you have the right virus protection and, or whatever, you know, that, that the network itself that didn't... Uh, didn't stop that, but uh, now the internet connections, internet uh, is is behind everything. Uh, everything going on, it's it's connected in some way or another, and some are, are more vulnerable than others. But banking and trading, uh, like stock trading, uh, the traffic lights, power grid, communication, uh, all of this hooks to the internet in in some way or another, uh, and there is uh, real potential for for problems. Uh, the the Stuxnet worm, uh, which some of you may have heard of, I, it's still well at least last I checked I haven't I haven't looked into it too much for a few months but but there was a a computer virus created people think by uh, maybe Israel and the U S governments uh, to try to stop Iran's nuclear production uh, and it worked they put it out on the internet. It got into the Iran's nuclear uh, power plant, and kind of, uh, you know, I think it told the cyclometers to spin way too fast or something. So basically, broke their power plant uh, just through through code because it, you know it was connected to the internet, uh, and and so these things are real. You know, the the idea that someone could at least theoretically, uh, you know cause a nuclear disaster or, you know, cause a cause traffic accidents all over. It's, it, there haven't been, you know, it's not easy. And, and in some cases, you know, they, they're very secure for the most part, but it's, but it's real. Uh, and so the question some people are asking is whether we should build some security into the network itself. Uh, should we, um, should the, instead of computers being secure on their own, should we have uh, something, an internet that's more secure, uh, whatever that means. Whether it means that we know where everything comes from. Every time you upload something, we have to know who it's from, or that we all the routers that pass information on have to check and make sure that it's not anything dangerous. You know, there are those sorts of things, and so that's one potential for the future of the internet. Uh, another related one is is the idea of identity that the internet has become a source of commerce and communication, uh, and a and it, it inherently lacks some of the, the natural protections that the real world gives us in commerce and communication. And so I, you don't know, uh, I mean, the, the most egregious example is, you know, pedophiles that pretend that their kids, you know, hey, you know, let's go play or whatever. Uh, if, if you're a kid, you know if you're talking to another kid in real life. But if you're talking on the Internet, you don't know. You don't know if you're talking to a kid, or a pedophile, or uh, or who you talk who you're talking to. Um, 
because there's no face. You know, there's there's an, a sense of anonymity. I, you know, we'll talk more about this in a few weeks. But catfishing, which uh, many of you've probably heard of, there's a, a show on MTV. This idea that people uh, pretend to be someone else. Uh, those sorts of things are uh, are dangerous. You know, they make it their big deal to those who are, who get uh, are taken advantage of. Obviously, um, commerce as well. There's you, it's hard to tell the difference online between what is a legitimate store and what is just a you know well put together website that's a scam. Uh, it's not like the real world. Nobody you know builds a huge store in the mall just to scam people. It doesn't work, right? And so so but on the internet, it's pretty cheap to build a pretty good website, and so it's much easier to uh, to scam people. Okay, so just a reminder, looks like a few people may have come in a little bit late. We're having a conversation over on the uh, on the event page. Uh, so if you have comments or anything, then, then put them there. Next time, maybe I'll try to, I'll see if I can add everybody to a Google Plus circle or something. I'll figure out how to invite people, and we'll, maybe we'll try chat, see if that works better. Uh, but I, th I think the events is working okay. Okay. Um, so, th so that's one is the the idea of uh, of security, uh, of identity, and then the, on the opposite side is this idea that maybe the future of the internet is increased anonymity, uh, and so I, we've talked about this a little bit. We'll continue to talk about it because I think it's really one of the most important uh, things going on uh, with regards to uh, communication and technology, and that's that's Edward Snowden. Uh, if you remember, he was a NSA contractor who revealed that the NSA was uh, doing more than we thought and more than they claimed to have been doing, that they're tracking a lot of what we do online. Uh, and, and the Internet enables this. Uh, there are a lot, much of our lives have moved online uh, and, and are therefore trackable uh, in, a, in an easy way that, that uh, instead of Having to you know look in people's windows and also bug their phone and also uh, you know check out their friends uh, manually you know the NSA can do all of that just by tapping into one cord uh, and so uh, I think that's that's important the internet makes this possible so uh, so people are talking now about now that that's been revealed about how to encrypt everything that happens to actually make uh, make it more difficult. To track people, and identify what they're doing, and so, so the the question I guess that needs to be asked is whether governments still have the power to control the internet, or whether it whether they don't anymore. Uh, will the internet uh, become a place that is beyond the reach of the law? So I, you know, ironically, that maybe once it's revealed that the, the government has been tracking us, that is the impetus that that makes them stop. Is that we create a system that they can't track. And the question is whether they will have the power to stop that from happening. Uh, and I think there's a big question. I think there's a big question about, about whether or not they will. Uh, so uh, the from the last chapter of the train that you should have read today, I wanted to give a few, uh, like a quick review. And then, uh, and then when, we're, oops, when we're done today, we'll... Uh, We'll just do the, the tech tool. So he talks about the Exo laptop, the one laptop per child laptop, as an example of generativity. And so let's let's have a conversation over on the other page about what is uh, generativity according to to the train, and, and how how does that relate to the laptop? So if you have any ideas, oh yeah, there we go. Again, what is uh, what's generativity, and, and how does that relate? Yeah. 
Yeah, sure. So, so according to the Zetrain ratings, he focuses a lot about how the internet is generative, and so I want to get at kind of what that, uh, what that means. What does it mean that it's generative? Yeah, Tommy, really good, really good. Um, I think I think that's uh, a big part of it that it's it's this idea of unanticipated change. So that it's it's systems that are designed to uh, to be able to do things that that you don't anticipate. And so. Uh, See. Yeah, good and bad. And then, and then another part of it that he talks about in, in today's reading is that the problems are solved only after they appear. That you don't try and build all the security and you don't try and control for bad for all bad actors. You kind of trust that people will be good and trust that you'll be able to solve problems once they appear. Um, and he argues that, that a lot of today's technologies are designed for consumption, that they aren't designed to be generative for new uses, like the iPhone that that Steve Jobs or whoever, uh, the, those sorts of systems, whoever designs them, thinks they know exactly how people use them. They design them to be uh, used for those things and to be very good at those things, but they aren't designed to allow for new things. They aren't designed to be open. So, And he, he argues that that's a bad thing. So, uh, so what I want to do is I have a few discussion questions. Uh, again, on, on the page, uh, and then, uh, and then after that, uh, you can work on the tech tool. Uh, what we'll do is I will uh, be available. We will end the hangout. Uh, excuse me, but I will be available. I'll be online. If you want, uh, we can. If you want to do a hangout with me, I can do that, or I'll answer email, or whatever. Uh, so let's let's talk about some of these questions. So so what are the biggest problems with the internet today? And and specifically, what are the biggest problems? That you've had, I guess, as well. Uh, you know, is it uh, viruses? Is it that people are jerks? That that there's no accountability? That there are trolls? Is it that uh, people spend too much time on the internet? You know, what do you think the biggest problems are? Uh, and and are they fixable, or is it just kind of part of of the internet? So post a few thoughts there. And related to that, would the internet be better if identity was known? Is, is that a fix for, for some of these things? Uh, to answer Sarah's question, yeah, we'll have Tech Tool 2 due on Thursday, Thursday before class. Yeah, so the do the reading for next time, uh, Carr and Kelly readings, the Tech Tool, and let's also, I forgot to mention this in the slides, but uh, if you would, uh, I've put together, it's part of this RSS feed one. You'll see, um, you will see uh, a list of everyone's blogs. And so what I want you to do is comment on at least two people's blogs. So every time after you write a blog post, uh, like at the time that you write the next one, 
you'll also comment on two other people. So basically just every time you write a blog post, comment on two people's past blog posts. Uh, just so we can kind of get some interaction so you can see how they write blogs, get some good ideas. And so that, that page that's part of the uh, RSS tech tool has like a randomized list so you can you can do that. So Okay, good. So Tessa says that the biggest problem is that something's there forever on the internet, which I think is that's really important. That that even unimportant things can stick around for a long time. Embarrassing things, things that you wouldn't want there. It's very hard to get rid of, especially you know you look at these poor people that become the object of uh, of memes. You know, some stupid picture of theirs, and all of a sudden everyone knows about it, and there's no way to get rid of something like that. Great. Uh, Frank says that. Uh, Scams and viruses are pretty easy to get to avoid, but what about jerks? Uh, and so, uh, good. So, who says I can't fake my identity? So, Frank, I guess the question is, what if it was impossible? What if every time you got on a computer, you had to prove it was you? You know, you had a password and email, and you had to enter your social security number, and so you had to do a thumbprint scan or whatever it is, prove it's you. So everything was came from someone. So that's kind of the question. Okay, Matthew says the problem is that it's that it's not free, that there's still barriers to entry and you have to pay an ISP, and they do have control still over what what gets there and what doesn't. Uh, okay, Sarah says the biggest problem is no filtered information. There's too much information, too much of it is false. Catherine says you can't trust it, so that's pretty, pretty similar. There's a lot of junk out there. Kenny says you can't fix people, so maybe, so it's not fixable. Good. And anonymity, that's a great point. Anonymity is a benefit and a problem. Good. So Emma, Emma points out that, that anonymity can, can be a problem, although, you know, I, I guess it's it depends on whose side you're on, right? So the Iran weapons thing, it may very well have been a good thing for us and for Israel, uh, but bad for them, you know, and it, it points out that there could be other other dangerous. Good. Uh, and filtered content, not easily fixable. Good. Uh, yeah, so people are jerks online and offline, <laughs> Claudia, Claudia seems to be saying, and so that that maybe some anonymity would help, but some people are, are going to be problems no matter what. Good, yeah, Frank. Good point. That there's there's definitely a lot of uh, of issues for implementing security. Good, very good discussion. Thanks, everybody. So, uh, let's see. Let's uh, let's move on so you guys have have some time to to work on that tech tool. Uh, so. We'll just kind of talk about all the rest of these these questions at once, uh, and then and then you can work on the tech tool. But I'll I'll hang out and, and talk to those who want to uh, want to talk. So, do you think generativity will be hurt by making the internet more secure? What will be gained? What will be lost? Uh, and and this is uh, kind of important. Have we? So one of the one of the arguments is that the the internet has only become what it is today because it was generated because it was designed openly that no one would have. Uh, if if the internet was owned by CompuServe, there's no way they would have started Wikipedia. There's no way, you know, that that they would have started Facebook because uh, because these right. things to come along, or is the internet done 
as much as we want it to as it evolved to the point where it's not like, okay, now let's make it more secure. We don't need to be as, as generative. We don't need to be as, uh, as open to new ideas. So that's, that's the idea. And uh, he says, oh, it's kind of not all showing up. Uh, so he says that, uh, that we shouldn't, basically. That we shouldn't make it a lot more secure. We shouldn't redesign the internet itself. Uh, and that, uh, that if we try to, then it's too big now. And the regulators and others will, will try to prevent abuse instead of, of letting it be kind of open and generative. That if, if we try to redesign the internet now, it would be locked down and it, would, it wouldn't be as useful and as cool. Uh, and then the last question is uh, that I thought was interesting is that Gene Spafford, who's actually at Purdue, he's a computer scientist here, uh, said that uh, this like Exo laptop might not be a good idea, that we're giving people uh, uh, who don't know about security, don't know about proper IT use, uh, and it's not really solving their problems. That, that we're doing, we're concentrating on the wrong things. Uh, that we sh we shouldn't be working so much on bringing the internet to these people. But as he says, clean water and freedom from disease is what they really need. So that's uh, that's one last thing. Uh, and then Zatrain says, well, yeah, but it is so ger generative that th it, there's things that internet could be useful for in these situations we just don't know about because we haven't given it to people like this uh, and that there may be disruptions that will be good. So uh, so those are the discussion questions. Again, I, we did those. Would generativity be hurt by making the internet more secure? Do we need the internet to be generative still? Uh, and then is the internet uh, bringing the internet to developing countries positive or negative? And then when you're done, you know, Whenever you want, go ahead and start working on that, that RSS reader uh, tech tool. I'll help by email. Uh, I also have office hours uh, starting after class. And so I'll, I'll be around. I'll stick around here. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and see how things go. So I will uh, I'll also, I mean, we can talk on Thursday about this, think about uh, whether this was a good format. I think, to be honest, it's, it's been kind of a pain. I was hoping at least the chat would work. Uh, at least from my perspective, it's been, uh, you know, I don't like being one-sided conversation. So, uh, so we'll see. I, th I think, uh, yeah, we'll see. So let's let's talk about it on Thursday. Talk about what we learned. Talk about what's uh, what's good or bad. And uh, I think that's about it. So, uh, let's. I'll go back to the uh, questions here. Yeah, so if anybody wants to stick around, I'd, I'd love to chat about these those questions. I, I think I'm, I'll turn off my uh, camera, and uh, I'll keep chatting about those. Um, but you're welcome to uh, end this now, and uh, in fact, maybe I'll stop the broadcast as well. You're welcome to, to end this now and work on the tech tool, and then just ask me questions by email, uh, ask questions on that on the event page or whatever. So thanks, everybody. We'll, we'll talk on Thursday about how this went, you know, what your thoughts were. Thanks for, uh, for coming and stay warm out there.